Hello and welcome to this quick tip video with Smartest. I had some questions recently about my use of Spotlight and the timeline to be able to use reference and to be able to create different views so that I can match my concept and my sculpt up inside a ZBrush. So I want to go ahead and share that with you real quick. So here is the sculpt that I started as part of the ZBrush Summit this year, 2021. Um, it was an hour long speed sculpt based off of a sketch that I did. And I wanna bring that sketch in so that I can use it in Spotlight as my reference. So I'm gonna start off by going to Texture. I'm gonna hit Import. I'm gonna to go to my folder where I have it saved. I'll grab that concept. Okay, now you see nothing's happened yet. I have to go up to Texture grab the, you know, select that texture and hit this add to spotlight button. Once I do that, you see it grabs it, puts it in really nice and big. Because it's a PNG, you'll see that it's just the image and the background, there is no background, so it's just transparent and, and you have a nice clean shape here. Okay, so I, I always recommend using a PNG with no background. Um, if you do use a, an image with a background. If you have to use a JPEG, I would use a JPEG with a black background. That would just eliminate the background without having to do any extra work. Um, otherwise, you have things like you, you can select the paint, and if you control alt, click and drag in certain areas, you can see it gets rid of the colors. Control alt, click and drag, you see it gets rid of that little section of color. And if you keep dragging, control alt, click and drag if you keep dragging far enough you can get rid of the whole image I'll just control Z to be able to keep all that so I'm just going to keep this about right here and then hit Z to be able to commit that the first thing that's important to do once you add in an image to spotlight is to go up to brush go down to samples and turn off spotlight projection this will allow you to be able to sculpt and paint on your model like normal as you would without having any spotlight image in there Other, otherwise it's going to use your spotlight image for whatever color and height data that you may be using and so you won't be able to affect your model unless it's behind the image and then it'll only affect it in a kind of a weird way uh, trying to use the black and white values the, the grayscale values of the image to be able to um, you know, to be able to create height and sculpting and color information so now that we have that set up I want to be able to create some views for my character so that I can you know so I can align uh, align him with the concept and things like that in fact if we wanted to I could even take my concept and let's kind of grow it up a little bit just so it's a little bit more in view if you grab inside of the circle then you'll be able to kind of reposition it. If you grab the center of the circle, you can see you can reposition the circle and you can snap that to different different points on your mesh, you know, different uh, central points, world center, there's uh, mesh, mesh mid edge, it says, <laughs> you know, different things like that. So you can snap it to different things on your character, or on, your, on your mesh, or you can snap it to different points within your actual spotlight image, which is nice. Um, this works just just fine for us. So hit Z. Um, now what we want to do, if you wanted to hide it too, here's another tip. Shift Z, and that'll hide it. Shift Z to bring it back. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's line this up. One of the things I'm going to have to do is kind of change my opacity a little bit. I take this and kind of scale it back a little bit. Inside of the new version of ZBrush, there's another button that'll allow you to kind of come down. It'll be down here in this section, uh, and it'll create kind of an outline uh, of your of your image, so that you can just have lines there instead of the full image, and you can you know have a little bit more clear of a direction of where to line it up. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it about right there, though. I'm going to try to line up my character as best as I can and one of the things I need to change is my my camera angle um, I'll probably have to 
Uh, let, let's let's see how I feel about lining it up kind of like this. Yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and check this out. So perspective. Uh, let's come up over here. Yeah. That's more the uh, camera angle that I think I, I was working from. So let's go ahead. Let's kind of put this into place more or less. If it's not perfect, then we'll uh, we'll work with it. We'll see what we can do. You can see there's a lot of um, a lot of ways that I can go ahead and kind of clean this up and realign things and and whatnot. But now that I have my view pretty much worked out, I'm going to go up to movie. I'm going to go down to timeline. I'm going to sit, hit show first, okay, and then I'm just going to just click, just click right there anywhere in that timeline, and that's going to create this little key. So, uh, so now if I if I come over here and I'm you know say I'm I'm working on this and you know having a good time whatever, um, if I want to be able to go back to that spot and see how it's matching up, I can just left left click and you can see that that. Uh, that reader in the timeline jumped over to the beginning of the timeline. If I hit my right, uh, right mouse, uh, not my right mouse, sorry, my right uh, arrow on my keyboard. So just left, left arrow, right arrow, and that'll get me to right back where that spot is on my timeline. So I already have this all set up. So you can also save spotlights and load spotlights. So I'm going to say load spotlight, and we'll go back to that that spotlight that I had and then we will say movie and then we can you can also save your timeline you can load your timeline so I'm gonna load my timeline go back to my timeline here and there we go I'll also use this as a way to be able to create um, some timeline images to be able to create um, you know for instance that like turn images so let's hit shift Z to get rid of that to get rid of that uh, spotlight image I'm going to zoom out on my canvas just a little bit and the first thing I want to do let's go ahead I'm just going to go to a front view and let's just control click to be able to drag out just a little bit I am going to uh, it's gonna go. I'm just gonna move down the timeline some, just to be able to keep these separate. It's not. I like to kind of group my timeline points. So yeah, let's go ahead and put that one there, so that way we can see that that's its own thing. And this is going to be in the middle. So I'm gonna hit Shift S to be able to to screenshot that, so that it stays in its place. And I am going to say. You know, that might even be too close. So let's say, so we can see, we can see now because we have um, all this overlapping right here. I don't want that much overlapping. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to shrink this down to about where I think it ought to be. And we are going to make a mark. And then we'll say um, Control N to be able to clear the canvas. We'll, we will Shift S. And then we'll move over to the center center one. Zoom out a little bit. And we'll kind of zoom out until it's about the same size. Let's go ahead and put a new marker in there. Drag the old one off. And we can reposition it if we want to. Okay, shift S just to be able to screenshot it. And then if we wanted to, we could come over here. We can make like a back view. Which is always helpful. So just understanding kind of what views you want to be able to have, it's great. Add in another marker, and we can come up here, movie, timeline, save, man and moon views, awesome. Replace it, yes, and we're done. So yeah, just to be able to recap on that, there's our image. We'll say actual to be able to line that back up, and. Yeah. So there is my tip for using the timeline and spotlight to be able to work with reference inside of ZBrush. Um, I hope you found that helpful. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you liked that, and that was uh, that'll be helpful in your uh, in your workflow. And yeah, enjoy. Keep ZBrushing, and I'll see you later. Smartest out.